How do you shift your mindset from individual contributor to manager? Growing a company from nothing to something required being an individual contributor and getting a lot done with a little. But as we grow, it's clear that I need to hire people for specific roles and accept the except that I can't do everything. I'm very used to getting stuff done and doing everything myself, and it feels a little weird trusting someone else to do it. How can I shift my mindset to appreciate being a manager over an individual com- contributor? So uh, straight up out of the gate, you are actually failing as a leader by doing what you're doing, by, by, do, by, by continuing to do things yourself, get yeah. in the weeds and not let people lead, you're actually failing as a leader and therefore failing the team. So number one, you have to watch out for that. And you know, by the way, that means the more time that you spend in the weeds getting stuff done yourself because you're so perfect, that's the less time that you're thinking about strategy. That's the less time that you're thinking about you know, what's gonna happen tomorrow and future operations and that's not good. Mm-hmm to be in that situation. So, uh, first of all, you need to build the trust with these people. You don't have to give 100% trust to someone out of the gate. Mm-hmm. If if I if we're, we're in a company and I hire you and I'm gonna have you doing some task, that doesn't mean I say, hey Echo, here's the task, go do it, and now I'm just gonna walk away. Mm-hmm. I don't even know you. I don't know how well you can do the task. So I'm gonna say, hey Echo, here's the task. Actually watch me do it. Okay, you've seen me do it. Now I'm gonna watch you do it. Okay, cool. You seem to be doing that pretty well. I'm gonna come check on you in two hours. See how it's going. Come back two hours. Next day I check you once every five hours. Next day I check you in the morning and I check you once in the afternoon. Next day I just check you at lunchtime. Maybe two, three, four days later I check you once every other day. Pretty soon you're good to go. And guess what I'm doing? I'm doing something else. Yeah. Doing something that I should be doing. I built the trust. I confirm that you know how to do it. I, you trust me because now I trust you. We're building some team and some relationship. So that's all good. So to the original point, the, I think the way that you shift your mindset is to recognize that micromanagement is actually failure. Mm. No progress is made while you're micromanaging. The longer you are micromanaging someone, the longer it takes for them to develop as a human being and as a useful person in your organization. Every minute that you micromanage someone is a minute of them not thinking for themselves Mm. is a minute for them not taking ownership of something Mm. if I'm micromanaging your task you're not taking ownership of it if you're not taking ownership of it we know where that leads Mm. so let people learn let people lead and to not do that is failing Mm. don't fail one time when I was young in Hawaii you get your driver's license at 15 Dang. I don't know how, how what it is now. That was a long time ago, obviously. But I learned to drive with my dad before that. You know, when mm. we were young, we'd get in quite this dirt roads mm. everywhere. So he's like, "Hey, you know." And it started with when we were young, when we we're young, young, like seven, eight years old. We'd sit on his lap. So he'd do the shifting and the gas and the brake and stuff like that. Dirt roads. We'd just do the steering. That's what it kind of started with. Then after a while, he's like, okay, now we're just going to learn how to do this. You know, it was a manual uh, Mm -hmm. stick shift. So he was like, okay, now you just learn how to go. Right. And now it's go and shift gears all on the dirt road, whatever. And so when I was like, just turned 15 or maybe even 14. And he was like, hey, um," he's like, all right, let's go drive. You know, usually it'd be like we were going to the beach on the way home. Hey, let's take this dirt road. You can steer kind of thing. But this was actually like, okay, let's go drive. So I'm like, all right, but he pop, he plops me in the front seat and he goes, all right, take us there. And we were going wherever we were going down to the beach. He's like, all right, take us there. I was like, dang, I don't know, bro. I've steered before. I've shifted. I haven't done the whole thing all at once, but he was sitting right there. He just mm-hmm. said, take us there. I was like, dope. I took, took him there, whatever. He didn't critique much, you know, mm-hmm. um, but I got there and he just kind of let it happen. It was the same kind of thing where first he's checking my mm-hmm. steering. Then he's checking. This is over time, though, yeah, yeah. the years. Got and, you dialed. And yeah, after a while, it's like, boom, he still has an eye. He's still managing. Mm-hmm. He's right there. He could slide his foot over to the brake if he needed yeah. to, I guess. If S- needed, yeah. Put his hand on the wheel, steer you away from the oncoming truck. If need be, if yeah. Needed. And at the same time, he's letting me make little micro mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hit the curb a little bit. No yeah, or <laughs> it was more like, you know, stick shift. You oh, know, yeah. you do it too much. Or, yeah. 
Uh, and he let that happen. He because that's my thing to figure out the feel because each car yeah. is different. Truck. And that's cool because that's actually good. Uh, one time, we were going on an operation. My first deployment to Iraq, and we were driving a far distance through cities we'd never been through before, and we got turned around mm. in the city, <laughs> and we were we had a far way to go to our objective. It was a kind of a high profile operation and where we stop mm. and I hear the call on the radio like all stop and I say something along the lines of you know what's up and you know the the, the point man which is the lead nav in mm. the vehicles he comes up on the radio he's like uh, just I'm trying to get my bearings mm. like, a little stress in yeah, the voice yeah. I walk up, so I get out of my vehicle, just to make sure, and this guy's one of my bros, and I walk up to the vehicle, and he's in there, and I could see he's he's flustered. Mm. He's flustered, and he's, uh, you know, um, I don't want to say embarrassed, but he's flustered, and now I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, and I do, And I actually. think his thoughts are, Jocko's, you know, mm. Jocko's going to be mad, or whatever. Yeah. And... I, I go up and he's he, he's cracks open the door right I open the door on the Humvee and I go you know what's up man <laughs> just in the most mellow voice yeah, I thought yeah. I go hey what's up man he goes I, I I don't know where we are and I was like cool man we'll, we'll set security let me know when you got it dialed and he's like all right cool yeah and that's what we did so cool. and it took like you could see his face, like he he just turned back to the computer, he started working. But when I walked up to him, you know, you could see that yeah. he was panicking, yeah. because you know you got we had a bunch of vehicles, you know, you got seven vehicles with us, and and <laughs> they're all driving around, and now you've done two laps around the, you know, yeah. it's, it's not fun. Yeah, and, and there's and you know you, you make it through and like past the enemy one time, you got away with cool, it. Cool, yeah. Now you went by him three times, pushing <laughs> it, <son>. not cool. <laughs> yeah. And everyone in the whole. B- b- troop is sitting there in the vehicles going hold on jackass is gonna run us by this checkpoint again or all by this thing us. again yeah all of us so but yeah I just went up hey bro w- w- what's going on yeah. I- I'm just trying to find I don't know where we're at okay mm-hmm. we're gonna set security let me know when you got it figured out we'll be good <sighs> so good man and <laughs> that's bro that's so good on you because you know everyone is feeling the stress like what you're saying for like, sure it's like dang where's this guy leading us what yeah, the hell yeah. does he not know what? I'm sure everyone was feeling that yeah then it's like, all right, I gotta kind of detach <laughs> from that feeling and go, you know, yeah. dang. And uh, and then you know, I got on the radio because that was, you know, I just said, uh, I said the guy's name. I'm like, hey, just getting it sorted out right now. We're gonna be rolling here in about a few minutes when we when we know where we're at. And everyone's, you know, set security. Boom, done. Dang. There was another time we got ambushed on that same deployment. <laughs> sure. And I was in vehicle number two, and we were in a big convoy, and. The, the ambush pretty much was aimed at the center and then the back of the convoy. Mm. So a bunch of machine gun fire, a bunch of RPGs, and nothing really hit. And in fact, nothing did hit. The RPGs went over us, and and I was, I would never say much on the radio, right? Sure. And the guy in the back vehicle, uh, he's actually the platoon chief, <laughs> but I, I say I didn't say much, but clearly we just got ambushed. I mean, there was yeah, a yeah. massive <laughs> machine gun fire and explosions going off. Yeah. And we pout, you know, we go through the, we continue on. And the platoon chief in the back, <laughs> he says something on the radio, something along the lines of, he's like, you know, comes up on the radio. He's like, hey, Jocko, you know, we, we, we just got hit with an ambush back here. And I got on the radio and I was like, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know it's like it's it you know right, and everyone yeah. goes okay I guess we're all right you know yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like all good all good in the hood uh, you guys are crazy yeah. Man. yeah I think you did me like that one day yes in fact when I say I think I mean I remember the time you did me okay so I was I'm forgive me right now you just talked about an actual ambush that uh-huh. actually happened I'm talking <laughs> about something way less impactful just bear with at me. least you're asking for forgiveness before yes, you tell please. a grocery store. <laughs> it was was actually this podcast we had recorded like a week or something early Uh so I was like boom let me finish the whole thing get it ready to get pushed out all I need it was done all I had to do is press the the button to make it live that's all I had to do and this was like a week I think it might have even been two weeks in advance wow those are the good old days yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) but um and then the day came it was so done and out of my mind the day came and I was just like hey I don't know I don't know it's not on my mind so long story short I 
I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. So you <laughs> wake up. I didn't press publish. She was ready to go. Yeah. Anyway, so I wake up in the morning <laughs> and I see message tw- a bunch of Twitter posts. Right. I understand that, but I got a text message. I think there might have even been a phone call. Oh no, no, no. It was a phone call and a, a text message from you. I was uh-huh. like, this you know, this is <laughs> this is something, you know. I'm like, all right. But what did you, Jocko did you want? know what it was? No, I oh, had no idea. It was know. out of my mind. I was like, oh, something obviously is something. You know, I get it this early in the morning, yeah, by the way. Yeah. You, you know, so I look at it, um, and oh, so I listen to the voice message first, uh, and it was you all come. You're like, hey, Echo, how's it going? Uh, good morning. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so he goes, um, just to sort of let you know, it's Wednesday. You know, we have that but that podcast we recorded. That's you know, that's supposed to be going on right now. So. Whenever you can, whenever you're ready, go ahead and, and post that. And I was like, <laughs> but it wasn't like all the Twitter posts. Where's, where's the podcast, bro? Where's the podcast, slacker? You know all that. And then, then there's Jocko. It's like, hey, whenever you're ready, it's all yeah. good. You know, I, I didn't know I'm what happened. Say, Maybe you're under more stress. I never know. You got to think when you're in a leadership position. Not that I'm like the leader here, but if you're in a leadership position, you don't know what someone else is going through. Yeah. I, maybe you had some technical issue, and I'm like going to call you up and be like, well, where's that thing? And yeah. now you freak out even make more. Make it worse. Yeah, I don't need to make it any worse. Yeah. There's something going on. Like you were sleeping. Or whatever. <laughs> I didn't want you know, but you always think about the yeah. perspective of the other person that you're dealing with, and you don't want to escalate things. Yeah, that's not going to help. Yeah, just de-escalate. Hey, man, just wondering what's up. If you, know, if you need anything from me on the podcast, maybe we need to re-record it. I don't yeah. know. No big deal. <laughs> Let me know. I'll be yeah. over. That's what we're here for. Kind of like with two people shouting at each other, and you chime in, say "Stop shouting," and you're shouting. It's kind of that. <laughs> yeah, now you got three people shouting. Yeah, you know? yeah, messing it up. Anyway.